Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents pastor and evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I want to welcome you back today, and we appreciate the Lord Jesus for the privilege of being with Him. We've been on a message concerning especially Israel and the goodness that God has for them and for us also if we really turn our hearts and dedication to the Lord because children, we can't climb up any other way or try to establish a new covenant or a new way. We're going to have to go with the good old gospel that Jesus gave to these apostles and the prophets. And today I'm going to be taking us once again in the 11th chapter of the book of Romans. And I want you to listen especially now out of verse 1. And we're going to be speaking of the scripture now. And all Israel shall be saved. So we need understanding concerning how that all Israel can be saved. And we're going to need the Bible for the answer. So go with me to the book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Paul said, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people which he foreknew. Will you not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have, God said, Reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So you see, God always had some people that would be faithful to him. And here he said, I've got me 7,000 men that have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, Paul said, at this present time also, that's in his day. There is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. That means by the law. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Listen to this. According as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should see, or should not see, ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David said, Let their table be a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and fall down or bow down back our way and bow down their back our way. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Now listen to this. God forbid, but rather, through their fault, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now that's, that's done happen when Jesus tore down that middle wall and gave us all a chance, especially from the book of Acts chapter 10 when Peter preached a first message to the Gentiles. So, the Bible said, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now watch this. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. What is God saying here? 
the Jews fall. The Gentiles are no hope, no God in the world. So now God is just going to conclude both of them. I'll show you in a minute. Both of them, Jew and Gentile, as lost people. God so loved the world. The world was lost, including the Jews. He came to his own, the lost sheep, remember, of the house of Israel. So he was concluding they were all lost. And that's why John said, He came unto his own, come on, and his own what? Received him not. But the ones that did, now there comes on with the remnant into the New Testament, they accepted Christ. See? And that brought the remnant that hadn't bowed down to the priests, to the elders, and to the law that had ceased out. See, they tried to establish back the law, but Christ was the end of the law. Now I'm talking about the high priests and elders. But the rim that went on into the New Testament. So what did the Bible say? Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle, Paul said, of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to immolation them which are my flesh, come on, and might save some of them, God help us. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Now, what's this? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Well, watch this. And if some of them branches be broken off, and that thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partaketh of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Now listen to this. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Now that's done helping. Here's your answer. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, because they rejected Christ. And thou standeth by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Now watch this. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. What God is saying, if they were broken off because of their unbelief, and you were grafted in, then you better be careful also that you're not broken off with your unbelief. And you better believe they're not as many as we think in America and the Christian movement that is saved. That may sound hard for you to understand, but I'm going to tell the Jews, the Gentiles, you, me, anybody else, if we do not build upon these apostles and the prophets, especially the New Testament, we're not saved either. Because Jesus told and chose these apostles and said, Go you in all the world, preach a gospel to every creature. Watch this. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So what is saved? That's believing. But he that believeth not shall be damned. That's unbelief that will break off. You, me, if we climb up any other way, God help us, or try to pervert this gospel and set our own ways up, just like you're seeing multitudes doing in America, then our Christianity is no different than the Jews. We're all cut off. Without this gospel of Jesus Christ, there is no power. You say, preacher, that's hard. You go read the book of Romans out in 1 Corinthians. Now listen to Paul. He said, we preach Christ, crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, 
and unto the Greeks foolishness. But, here's your good news, unto them which are called both Jew and Gentile, or Greek, Christ, the wisdom of God and the power of God. That's how we preach Jesus. The wisdom and the power of God. And that means there's nobody but Him. God help us. That's why Jesus rose from that dead in Matthew 28 and said, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Come on. All power. No other name. No other man can bring you salvation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, children, I'm going to show you how the Jews can get in and the same way I have to get in. Now, first of all, watch your Bible. Watch this. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness, that's your mercy, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt also be cut off. You see, if you don't obey the gospel, you'll be cut off too. Now watch this. And they also, who is they also? The Jews. If they abide not still in what unbelief shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Children, I wouldn't lie on God for nothing. I want you to hear this. In Mark 16, when Jesus told these apostles, go in all the world, they went to the Jew first. Preach the gospel to every creature. It's your day, their day, my day. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now children, I want you to understand something. According to your Bible, they also, if they abide not still in, un in unbelief, shall be grafted in for God's able to graft them in again. What's that mean? If they'll turn to the Lord, if they'll turn to this gospel, you say, preacher, they can't. You better go read your Bible. That scale will be lifted off of them just as easy as it was to Paul and you too if you're turned to the Lord. Come on, children, listen to me. Paul was so deep in his religion, he said, I lived the straightest life a Pharisee. But I persecuted this away. And he was a Hebrew. But did God have mercy and shine that light about him? And the thing Saul asked the Lord was, Who are you? I'm persecuting these people, but who are you? And the answer was, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting because you're touching my people. You understand? So old Saul just said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What did happen to him? God had a little preacher that come to him and the scales fell off of his eyes and that little preacher said, now you go rise and be baptized. Ananias, he may not have been a preacher, but I believe he was a pretty good one because when he went to him, he told him, arise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Children, all I'm telling us is if the Jews will not abide in that unbelief, God will graft them. Now, Here's the thing about it. Our so-called Christianity that's going to Washington, that's fighting everything in them, they say, for the defense of Israel and the help of Israel. They've got most of them convinced that they can't know Jesus. Some of the Jews are following Jesus because somebody's telling them about it. They're saying that the nation of Israel can't be saved until Jesus Christ comes back and takes a Gentile church out and then he's going to raise up 144,000 and save the Jews. Children, they ain't a bit of Bible for that. I'll get the time and show you that the first resurrection's already happened and as far as 144,000, they're at the throne of God right now following Jesus. Now, I can't get in that message right now, but children, I'm going to tell you something. As God is my help, how can I win them over if I tell them they can't be saved until Jesus comes? Honey, listen to me. How can they be saved today? If you remember what Jesus told us in the book of 
St. John chapter 12, verse 31, Jesus said, Now, not in the future, is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. You hear what I'm saying, children? When Jesus went to that cross and gave his life, his spirit to this day will draw whosoever will. Revelation, the last chapter said, The spirit and the bride say, Come, whosoever will. Whosoever will. Let him take of the water of life freely. You have to want Christ. And as sure as I'm here, if they'll just turn to the Lord God and lift that veil. You understand what I'm saying? They're still blinded to the Old Testament. And we're going to have to realize it. Don't matter if they build that temple, go back into blood and sacrificial offerings, it won't help them. It's going to take Jesus. And don't get hurt at me, you're going to have to study. The next coming of the Lord is the end. And He's going to have Him a people out of the Jews and Gentiles that's going to make up His bride. And the invitation went out when he gave his life on the cross. Whosoever will, there's no difference to God between the Jew and the Gentile. The same Lord is merciful unto all that call upon him. Don't even say that. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, we know, Paul said, how can they call on him without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? That ought to let us know most of these preachers out here is not sent by God. Because they're teaching that Israel can't be saved now. But children, they ain't nothing to hinder them or us either. Look how many Gentiles that go to church in the name of Jesus. Professing Christ but not saved themselves. Jesus said many said, well Lord we prophesy. We cast out devils. And he said, I never knew you. Well, what does it take? He that heareth these sayings of mine and do them. Did the gospel go in all the world? Bible said in Romans 10, their words went unto the ends of the earth. Sure as I'm here, children, watch your Bible. Now watch this. Verse 22 again. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fail, fail severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou shalt also be cut off. That's us Gentiles if we don't obey him. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, watch this. How much more shall these which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree if they'll only get out of unbelief and turn to Jesus. Come on, church. Ain't no difference in them and you. You don't want to believe the gospel? You're damned. You're lost. He that believeth is his baptized will be saved. Jesus said, I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, he'll be saved. You go to him, he'll save you if you believe him. Now, watch Paul. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. See, people is teaching that wrong. They're saying that blindness means that Israel, the nation, can't be saved until God takes the church out, the Gentile church. And then he'll come down here and save another woman, the Jew. Honey, you better believe they don't know this mystery. And let me tell you something, Jerusalem's already been trotted down. Right now, an invitation went out since Jesus Christ gave his life worldwide. Whosoever will, let him come unto me. If any man thirst, let him take of the water of life freely. Search the scriptures, he said. In them you think you've got eternal life and they are they that testify me. Honey, as God is my helper, 
This next scripture, watch this. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. Now let me show you what it just said though. It said Israel shall be saved as it is written. Not as the preachers are twisting this. And trying to explain it out of their own mind. God had a remnant. And it was called his election by the grace. Paul said even so at this present time there is a remnant according to the grace. And they came right on into the New Testament. Now children, as God is my helper, when they came on in, that's when all Israel shall be saved. God was bringing the people, tearing down the differences, the middle wall, and now he maketh no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. You understand that? Whosoever will, let him come. Honey, they're trying to tell the Jews and the Israelites that don't worry about it. You don't need Jesus now. You'll get him out in the future. Honey, this gospel is what every one of us need. That's the power of God. That's a salvation. And the only reason that they're not hearing it and it's truth is because everybody's going over to Israel for looks. They're not going over there to help. They're going over there to trade, to, to go over there and, and just make like it. That land is so holy. They don't need Jesus. Honey, they got to get him in this life. You do too. And me. If we don't get in this gospel and believe the apostles teaching, we're no better than anybody else. Come on, children. We need to open our eyes. The Bible said, and so all Israel shall be saved. And it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Hasn't that happened? 28th chapter of Isaiah, 16th verse. Bible said, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion. You know where that was, the Middle East. I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. Did Jesus come a stone? I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone. Was he tried? A precious cornerstone. Honey, as God is my help. Paul was right. He said, I'm an Israelite. I'm a Hebrew. God's not cast away his people. Even to this day, if they'll turn to the Lord, he's right there for it. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Come on, children. Now, let me close this day out with this part here. If you're turning your Bible, I believe it's a book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians here. Let me show you something. Chapter 3. Now, it's going to take time to bring this out, but I want you to listen to what Paul said here. <clears throat> Verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts. Listen to this. Known and read of all men. This is the apostles. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, come on, but with the Spirit of the living God. That's a Holy Ghost. Not in tables of stone, it's over with, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but Paul said our sufficiency is of God. Watch verse 6. Who also has made us, the apostles, able ministers of the New Testament, watch this, not of the letter, that's the law, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, thank God, but the Spirit gives life. You understand that? The Holy Ghost will save. But if the ministration of death, listen to this, written and engraven in stones under the law, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. Come on, Christ, cease that law. How shall not 
the ministration of the Spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, be rather glorious. For if the ministration of condemnation, see that was under the law, be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness, that's Christ, is our righteousness now, exceeding glory. For even that which was made glorious, listen to this, had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away, now watch this, was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. See, that was glory on the face of Moses. Seeing then, he was a lawgiver, that we have such hope. We use great plainness of speech. We're just going to tell you straight out. And not as Moses which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfast look to the end of that which is abolished. you know what that's telling us? Paul said, I'm not going to hide Christ. I'm not putting a veil over my face and hide the gospel to the Jews or even to us Gentiles. Not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. Now, listen to me. Why did Moses do that? Why did Moses put a covering over his face? Because the children of Israel were afraid. Didn't want to see all that smoke and that glory on that mount. So they told Moses, you go in unto God. And whatever God tells you, we will obey it. We don't want to see that glory. Well, what happened? When Moses would go in unto God, his face would shine with the glory. But when he would come out, then he would put a veil or a covering over his face so the children of Israel would not be afraid and he would speak to them. Then when he had to go back, he'd lift that veil off. Now, children, I'm going to show you what this means because God ain't got no hiding if you're obeying. Be sure to stay with the next program. I have to go off the air, but I'm just showing you that there is no difference right now between Jew or Gentile. Whosoever will can have Jesus in their life. If you're lost, if you'll obey Acts 2.38, that is the beginning that started it all, and that'll be the end of it all. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you why His name. Be sure to stay with me in the next program in Jesus' name. God bless you, children. Study these things out because the time is at hand. God bless you. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.